Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to our Wednesday morning trading room. Hold on a second here. We'll get the screen share going on. Well, yesterday was a little bit of a seesaw kind of day. Overall, the market remaining bullish, but then look at, take a look at this. Where the market left off was at 7,700. We're opening at 7,800. Boom. 100 points higher in the overnight. Crazy. Volume still relatively light, although it is near rollover, and that always kind of messes up the way volume looks. But here we are. It looks like we're going to test the top end of the trading range. And very likely see the market move back and forth for a bit. It'll probably get up here somewhere and it'll probably move down here to about 7,600, come back up a little bit, come down here to 7,300, give the talking heads a whole lot of stuff to talk about. And back down to 7,100, after which we'll make our way back up toward the top end of the trading range somewhere. This is likely, in my opinion, how things are going to play out through the summer. We shall see. But right now, we got ourselves a rather substantial opening gap to, below us. And it almost looks like the market's going to try to fill that gap. We're very bearish out of the gate. Uh, here at the Hawk, or the Raptor, producing a number one signal. I'm a little bit late on that, but that coming down, a couple of ticks from finding its profit objective. I would not be opposed. Normally, I don't like an early signal, but they do seem a little bit bent to the short side about that gap. Okay, we're getting a little bit of a pullback while we wait for this. Oh, look at that. That was a nasty little move higher. All right, there's some serious volatility here this morning. I think we better let the dust settle out a little bit. Uh, Ron's asking, Eric, what setup does that client you said he waits all day for that one setup and is successful. Uh, that's probably the late filter entry signal here on the Falcon. So it's this signal right here where your Filter goes out of sync, comes back into sync. Your trend line never changes color. I know he also watches uh, like a Bollinger Band suite for additional confirmation. He likes to have everything in sync. So he likes to see a, a bullish Bollinger Band and then that late filter entry signal. I do believe he likes it better on the Ninja 7 version. Let's see if we can find another one here. Well, here's a couple of late filter signals that worked out. The Bollinger's didn't come into sync until a little bit later. 
and then the next signal worked out, the late late filter entry signal. I think what's important here is that what he has done, and I don't think this can be overemphasized, is he's he's quite methodical about his trading. We're talking about Mark. Um, and what he did was he took the time to go back through his charts and determine for himself that the signal was valid and worth following. It's a little bit of homework. It, the nice thing about trading is that trading in hindsight, you know, you got loads of data here. Like here's another late filter entry signal and the Bollinger's come into sync same time the signal fills and very nice follow through. So he actually, like I said, he took the time to go back and prove to himself that the signal was worth following. And I think that's important because I can sit here all day and tell you how great the signal is. And I can do my best to show you valid signals. But until you convince yourself of it, you're not going to, it's not going to do you any good. And you're not, you may not even believe me. So what are you to do? Well, I would suggest that Like I said, you convince yourself that the signal is valid. You convince yourself, what setup do I have to wait for? Ray is another one uh, who is very disciplined about his trading. I think Ray is more focused on the hawk. And, you know, he'll look at something like a first micro macro cross. Here you can do a first micro macro cross and wait for it to be in sync with your Bollinger's or whatever, whatever you may happen to use. You can use just the first micro macro cross, you know, without anything else. It's a very high probability signal, but like I said, I can tell you that all day long, you have to prove it to yourself that it's a high probability signal. Um, on our rabbit hole Fridays, you know, I've, I've shown you how different indicators work. I know there's a few people in the room who like to follow ADX to see if the market is actually trending. So we spent a little time on DMI and ADX and how you can use that tool to help keep you on the right side of the marketplace. Uh, Ron's asking, like the first touch? Well, yes, you know, there too, the trend line touch signal is a very valid signal. But of course, the trend line touch signal needs something resembling a trend. Maybe this Friday, I know this Friday was going to be a trading Friday, but maybe tomorrow we'll take a few minutes and we'll take a look at uh, a time-based chart and how you can maybe use a time-based chart in conjunction with what's going on on your DTS charts to kind of gain a different perspective of the market. The thing with the mean Renko bars, like every charting style has its advantages and disadvantages. The main advantage to the mean Renko bars is it splits the market up. You can see very clearly here is resistance. There's obviously selling going on around 7795-ish. You can see support. You know very clearly there is buying at 7775. Right? There's 
that's very, very clear. This is not the kind of information that is obvious on a time-based chart. If you're watching like a five minute or a 15 minute, you won't know this type of information necessarily. The downside for using mean Renko bars is it splits the market up. <laughs> so sometimes you end up getting a, a little bit too much information, whereas the time-based chart kind of gives you a, often gives you a broader perspective. Okay, here we have a late filter entry signal, and we're just about to come into sync with our Bollinger. So let's see, there's the signal. So if I'm anticipating if the market gets above the high there, the Bollinger suite is going to come into sync. Now, I know the trend line went out of sync here for a single bar, but I'm not going to let that spoil the signal. One bar out of sync, <clears throat> that you can ignore that. If we got like two or three bars out of sync, that would spoil the signal. Another thing I know that Mark has done to improve his consistency, because he's trading some fairly substantial size now, is he's reduced his profit objective from 20 ticks on the NASDAQ to 17. So he's prepared to give up a couple of three ticks in order to improve his profit so you can see it's a very modest profit he's not looking for a huge run up but he's looking for a few things to line up here so we've got the late filter entry signal okay we're good we're waiting on the bollingers to come into sync which they should if they break this high all right so now the bollingers are in sync let's see if we get any follow through oh and he also runs a proper stop relative to his position size. I do know that in very often in his case, if he cannot maintain a proper stop, he will avoid the trade. Now watch it make a liar out of me. We did have a rather strong move here to the short side out of the open, but let's see if we can't get a little recovery. And you know, that's just one signal. You don't have to focus on the Falcon if you're a Raptor owner. You can do the same thing on the Raptor. You can look at your signals. You can go back through your charts and you can look at all your number one signals and you can say, okay, um, where's my number one signal? Okay, here's my number one signal. What was, what were the factors that made this number one signal successful? And you need to consider trend. Um, you need to consider, so, you know, was, has this market been trending? Has it been sideways? Okay, so it looks like the market's been trending. If you are in a trending market, I think you'll find trend lines very helpful. One of our Friday sessions will do trend lines as well. So you can see, okay, we're in a trend. When we're in a trend, rule number one says we stay with the trend as much as possible. Here's another number one signal. You can see that also came after a little bit of a pullback after a trend. A little bit of a pullback, a breakout of that pullback. But again, you need to you need to convince yourself that this is valid. And each of these signals was also in sync here with the Bollinger's. Okay, I better get back here to the trade and see what's going on. Oh, come on. Ah, scoundrels. So they're turning over on us a little bit here. Coming back to resume that, that trend. 
Uh, the third thing that I know uh, Mark is very particular about is his trading quota. I believe he trades three times a day now. But when he was starting out, that's not what he did. When when his account was all the way down to $3,000, I think he was just looking at a single trade a day. One profitable trade. Dan's asking at one, eight, uh, one central time yesterday, the market took off. Was there a report out yesterday? Well, I'll show you the website I use for checking reports is the Forex Factory. Forexfactory.com and they have a little calendar link that you can follow. They do a good job of it. So let's see what was going on yesterday. Well, at 1 p.m., the Bank of England had a rather substantial report. Oh, sorry, this is 1 p.m. Pacific time. So uh, 1 o'clock Central, that would be 9, 9 o'clock my time. Um, hmm, no, no report. I think President Trump tweeted something. I think that's what caused it. It's funny how trading has come to the point where you have to watch social media for uh, for market moves. Okay, no reports on on Saturday, Eric. Nothing really big tomorrow. Okay, so the market's floundering here a little. Let's see if we can't get up to our profit target. Come on, you guys. You're so close. Oh, yes, we were doing this trade on the Falcon. Let me go back to the Falcon. So we're stuck a little bit on this resistance zone. Oh, Ron says it was the Fed yesterday. Okay. Um, as you can tell, I don't follow reports that closely. And get going. Okay, so I'm going to get ready with my break even. When the market gets about three quarters of the way to my profit objective, I'll roll my stops up here to break even plus a couple of ticks. If it gets three quarters of the way to my profit objective, All right, they're hesitating here a little bit. I'm going to roll my stops to break even and hope for the best. They got half ways to my profit target, but didn't get all the way up there.
about to kiss the profit target. Come on. You stinkers. Oh, look at that. Get up there. And we'll cover a little bit extra. Yeah, look at that. Now, I was probably a little bit quick with my stop there. The market should continue a little bit higher. But the point is, had I let that find my profit objective, which probably would have been the smart thing to do, that would be it. I would be done. My trading would be finished. Most of us run into trouble when we hang around and trade more. You see me do it here in the room all the time. Like we'll grab a couple of trades and I usually try to make the point of saying, okay, my trading day would be done, but we still got an hour in the room. And so I hang out, I do another trade. And I do another trade and eventually almost without exception, one of those trades will end up being a loser. And of course the problem with losers is that because our stops tend to be a little bit broader is that very often that loser can wipe out your earlier two winners that one loser. So when I look at a chart like this now, I see the, the down, I see the consolidation. And there's no question trading like this is tough because look, we've just had a monster uptrend all through the overnight. So does this really count as a trend or is the market just going to ignore all that? Is it instead of a down and a sideways, is it a up and a very big sideways? Well, we don't know yet. If you're only looking for one trade today, you can you have the luxury of saying, is this the best trade I'm going to see today? Here we got ourselves another late filter entry and that did eventually get up to the profit target. We've got the late filter. Now, I don't remember, and this is something that you can experiment with uh, if you're going to focus on late filter entry signals. Uh, what happens when the Bollinger comes from underneath and becomes bullish? It's, it's in the zone, but it, it still crosses over. something to consider successful trading or successful traders you don't have to be exceptionally bright you really don't <laughs> um, but it does help to be observant and I'm sorry when I said exceptionally bright I was I was thinking of myself I wasn't implying <laughs> anything about anyone but 
uh, I was thinking back about how sometimes uh, being overly smart is actually a detriment. I probably shared with you guys a story, and I wish I could remember the fellow's name. He was one of the best floor traders. Um, I forget which, even which pit he was trading. But they interviewed him, and they were trying to figure out what made him such a good trader. Because there were, you know, people with degrees and and a lot smarter than this guy was in the trading pit, and he was out trading them. He was making much more money than they were, and he was a C plus student, so you know, just average. And he said that the problem with being an A plus student is that you expect to be right. And so you kind of get married to your position. As a C plus student, he says, I was wrong a lot. <laughs> he, he took being wrong. He never took offense at being wrong. It was just a, a fact of life for him. Okay, I was wrong. Uh, I'm going to try something here. Let's do a little experimentation with this late filter enter signal. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at taking this signal as the Bollinger comes back into sync, how I just mentioned. So you see the Bollinger still outside the band. The next bar, we're getting the warning dot. The next bar should print a signal, and that should bring the Bollinger back inside the band. We're bullish because we're above the zero line. And this is another late filter entry signal. We'll see if the earlier entry doesn't help us. So I think that's, uh, you know, I'm tossing a few things at you guys here this morning, but I think those are a couple of important considerations. A, you have to figure this out. You have to convince yourself that a late filter entry signal is a good signal, that a first micro macro cross on the hawk is a good signal, that a number one signal on the raptor is a good signal. Like I said, I can, I can tell you this all day long, but you have to convince yourself it's your money after all. You have to keep a proper stop. If you cannot keep a proper stop, don't take the trade. And don't trade too much. All right, so let's go back here. We were watching the late filter on the Falcon. Now, normally what I've done is I've waited for the Bollingers to come fully in sync rather than just partially in sync. And so this is, a, you know, a, 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 an experiment, if you will. And what I would do is I would make a note of this in my trading journal. That's another biggie. Keep a trading journal. Go to the Walmart. It's $2 for a spiral notebook. Get yourself a spiral notebook and write down the reasons you took the trade. The reasons are far more important than the entry parameters, the exit parameters, whether you made a profit or a loss. You should always have two reasons for taking a trade. If you can find two reasons for taking a trade, you probably will do okay on most trades. If the trade does not work out, which some of them will do, see if you can identify why the trade did not work out. So if this trade does not work out, I will make a note in my journal that, and this is the trade we're focusing on right here. If this trade does not work out, I'll make a note in my journal that, okay, the Bollinger 
if I'm going to use the Bollinger as a filter on my signal, it has to be outside the band. I'm looking at, does it work when the Bollinger is bullish and comes back into the band from the underside? And if it does work out, I'll put a big star on my journal and make a note of that as well. I guarantee you that in two weeks, that's 10 trading days, you will discover patterns. I guarantee it. And I'll, uh, good patterns and bad patterns, you'll discover stuff like, you know, if you put your stops right here and you keep getting stopped out, you're going to discover, oh, maybe my stops are too tight. Uh, if you're doing second push entries and the market moves too far and then you try your second push entry and then the signal fails, you're going to discover that okay, maybe I need to be a little bit more aggressive entering the market. Okay, we're getting our trend change signal now on the Falcon. Well, the warning dots anyways. Looks like it's going to print. There it is. Prints about the same place we got that late filter entry signal to occur. But notice this time we got the trend change signal. The Bollingers are in sync. We haven't engaged the signal just yet. If it trades above 77.95, uh, hopefully we'll get a little bit of a push higher from there. Uh, Ron asked, do you have someone to help install the journal program? Um, and I forget the exact price on it, Ron. I, I'd have to look back on the website. The Trader View journal is helpful from the point of view that it documents your, your trades for you very easily. So here's the Trader View journal. So it tracks your profits, your losses, and then you can click your reports view. It gives you a pretty little graph like this, and you can see how you're performing. Here's the problem with the trader view journal. Okay, so th this trade worked out here, or this day worked out. What made this day different than this day? Besides the obvious, that this day was a loser and this day was a winner. What was I doing different on this day than I was doing on this day? I don't know. I can't tell from that. But if I go back in my journal, my handwritten journal, I can tell you right away what I was doing different. There's uh, the Trader View Journal does allow you to expand uh, on each of the trades. By the way, you can open up each trade. You can type in comments, and that's that's fine. That's a nice feature. But there's something about physically writing something down that imprints on the brain versus doing it through a keyboard. So I would encourage you, yes, I know you have to, you have to write. <laughs> People are so afraid of writing nowadays. I don't know.
Another thing you should consider is when you're trading, it takes a whole lot of pressure off your trading if you already consider this gone. You know, if you have your reason for taking the trade, the trade does not work out. Um, it's a lot more difficult to, to trade when, you know, this $200 that I have at risk here is really, really, really important to me. And I can't stand to lose the $200. You're going to make some bad decisions. I'm sorry. That's just the way it is. Try to try not to think of it as money. Okay, looks like I'm probably going to get tagged out here. We've broken this swing low, waiting for the buyers to push back, after which I'm going to become more aggressive with my stops. And right now, it's looking as though doing this kind of thing. Oop, stop it. Where the Bollinger comes in from underneath is probably not a good idea. The market also has had a tendency for about the first hour of trading and the market tendencies change, but for about the first hour of trading, we're seeing a lot of sideways action. We're getting a lot of these trading channels developing. I don't think I've ever remember seeing, you know, so many sideways trading ranges so early in the day. This tends to happen toward the end of the day.
All right. Well, maybe it. It is going to work. <laughs> maybe I do need to change my notes and say, um, no, the signal does work out. That's a, we took a whole lot of heat on that. It is a balancing act. Wow, look at that. Well, I said I was going to be more aggressive with my stops, although I was watching the wrong chart. Um, they didn't really get me anywhere to to roll my stops. I guess up here when we got to 50%, I had my chance to get the trade back up to break even. Well, and still just a whole lot of this back and forth that we were watching here on the on the eagle. Now that we've seen the breakout, so right here was a bullish break. We're looking at the retest and for evidence that the buyers are gonna hold this market up. All right, let's see if we get a pushback now. Uh, okay, so 
I can make that note in my trading journal that what did I learn from this trade? Well, I learned that as far as late filter entry signals go, when I see this kind of setup, it's better when my Bollinger's are in sync. You know, trend lines are a great little tool as well. They're great for showing momentum. They're so simple. You can even draw them on indicators. You know, maybe uh, had I drawn a trend line on there, it would have helped to keep me on the right side of the trade. But again, these are things that you're going to learn by following for yourself. All right, well, let's see if we can't find another or find a decent opportunity. Okay, well, we're getting a number one signal here. They didn't want to go higher, so that's often an indication that they may try to go lower. I'm going to treat this current bar as my second push opportunity. I don't want to let it get too far away, so I'll just take this current hesitation. Uh, stops are a little bit cozy, but maybe we can get a little bit of a downside push. And... I can get the trade to break even now. Come on. There we go. Okay, so what made that trade better than the other trades? Well, we saw the market struggling to the upside, didn't we? Look at all the candy striping we have going on here. We, uh, we looked at an upside trade and it had very, very little follow through. Okay, if the market doesn't want to go up, often it will try to go the other way. Not always, but often. And we snuck enough out of there that we hit our, pro <clears throat> excuse me, hit our profit target. And what does that, uh, if we're trading a small uh, account, once again, my trading day would be done at this point. Right, I've done my one trade, I hit my profit objective, I would be finished. Ooh, nice follow through there.
Okay, now we're getting a little bit of a pushback now from the uh, from the median line. Okay, back to the hard edge, so we should anticipate some sort of reaction at this point. You can see a lot of waiting. Okay, there's a little bit of a pushback lower. Let's see, are the buyers going to try to come back here or? We haven't produced a signal yet, by the way. I'm halfway anticipating a signal. Oh, well, we did get a green bar sell here on the Eagle, but you know, here's another one of these ex experimentation things. I've got a green bar cell. If I'm using my Bollinger Suite as a filter, uh, the market's maybe starting to get a little bit more bearish. I've got a red signal here. So I could, if I don't want to take the trade for real, or if I'm in SIM, 
So I'm going to go from there to here to 59. That's going to be my profit. That's going to be my stop loss. And I can see how, how would this trade play out? Here's my signal. That's what I'm looking at. Okay, so the order got filled. Well, so far it's not terrible. We'll just kind of put that to the side. Okay, we got a number three signal printing approximately the same time. Okay, they're heading lower. At this point, I would probably bring my stops at least to here. Maybe even to break even. And so what I'm seeing is this kind of thing. Where we have a little mini trend Okay, the buyers are pushing through the sellers. That should encourage some selling. We did hit our swing target, by the way. I'm trying to sneak out a, um, a trend target based on the eagle. Oh, so here we have yet another late filter entry signal on the Falcon. Don't have the signal yet. The trend line's out of sync coming back into sync. We haven't seen the signal print yet. The Bollinger Suite is bearish. It's below the, uh, the zero zone here. And it has done the same thing it did to the other side where it dipped, it went above and came below. Now, last time it didn't work out. So maybe this time I'll wait for it to get below the, the uh, bearish end of the Bollinger's. Or what was the other thing I was looking at? I was looking at perhaps using a trend line. Let's see if it breaks the trend line. Maybe that'll be a better cue. Okay, so we're getting the warning dots. We're going to have a signal develop here shortly. And again, I can anticipate the signal will print somewhere near this low. 
So if we trade down below this median line, I'll insert an order. Okay, so there's the signal, and it looks as though we're going to breach the the trend line. There we go. All right, let's see if this works a little better. Oh, I need to keep my stop just a little bit further back. This is a, uh, a new low of the day right here, uh, for the morning session anyway. So this is the signal I'm observing and this was my criteria for entering. You, you also have to realize that you will never eliminate all bad trades. You know, you, we have our tools that we use, uh, but there's going to be instances where the market's just going to do what the market's going to do. Okay, we can also see that on this signal here, the Bollingers were in sync when the signal printed. So we'll see if that works out a little bit better for us. I get ready with my break even stop now. I'm about three quarters of the way to the profit target and. Oh, see, had I taken my 17 ticks, I think that's why Mark tightened up his profit a little bit. He kept seeing this little bounce at around 17 ticks, 16, 17 ticks. Ah, there we go. We got the 20. Okay. Well, so now there's two trades that have been profitable. 
we learned a couple of things, not only here on the Falcon in regards to the late filter entry signal, but maybe even here on the Eagle in relation to the green bar cell signal, right? That worked out pretty darn good. In fact, we could have got in and out of the Eagle earlier than we did with our Falcon signal. So these are things that you're going to learn as you trade. Like I say, you got to do these little experiments, if you will, and learn from the results, good and bad. Don't make the mistake of beating yourself up if you have a losing trade. We all take losing trades. You've paid for it. The least you can do is try to learn from it. All right, gang, I hate to trade and run, but I'm afraid I got a, an appointment I got to get to. And uh, so we'll get together tomorrow and we'll do our rabbit hole Friday. I'll try to show you maybe a few things um, looking at charts from a different perspective. I'll talk to you then. Bye for now.